Story Time, Fairy Tales, Stories and Legends, a project created by volunteers at Dante Alighieri Society of Michigan. Listen and enjoy. Italian Folk Tales, selected and retold by Italo Calvino. Volume 1, Fiaba 85, The Apple Girl. There once was a king and queen who were very sad because they had no children. The queen kept asking, why can't I bear children the same as the apple tree bears apples? Now it happened that instead of bearing a son, the queen gave birth to an apple, but an apple redder and more beautiful than any you ever saw. The king placed it on a gold tray on his balcony. Across the street from the king lived a second king, who happened to be standing at his window one day and saw on his neighbor's balcony a beautiful maiden, as fair and rosy as an apple, bathing and combing her hair in the sun. Open-mouthed, he stood staring at her, never having seen so lovely a maiden. But the minute the girl realized she was being observed, she ran back to the tray and disappeared inside the apple. The king had fallen madly in love with her. He racked his brains and ended up crossing the street, knocking on the door, which the queen answered. Majesty, he said to her, I have a favor to ask of you. By all means, majesty, replied the queen. Anyway, neighbors can help one another out. I would like to have that magnificent apple on your balcony. Do you know what you're asking, majesty? I'm that apple's mother, mind you, and I had to wait a long time before I had her. But the king wouldn't take no for an answer, so the other king and queen had to grant his wish in order for them to remain good neighbors. Then he went home with the apple, which he took straight to his own room. He put out everything necessary for her toilette, and the maiden would emerge every morning to bathe and arrange her hair while he looked on. That was all she did. She neither ate nor talked. She only bathed and arranged her hair, then went back inside the apple. The king lived with his stepmother, whose suspicions were aroused by her stepson's constant seclusion in his room. I'd give anything to know what my son is up to. War broke out, and the king had to go off and fight. It broke his heart to leave his apple. He called his most trusted servant to him and said, I'm leaving the key to my room with you. See that nobody goes in. Put out water and a comb every day for the apple girl and make sure she has everything she needs. And don't forget, she tells me everything. That wasn't so, the girl never said a word, but the king thought it wise to tell his servant the contrary. If a hair on her head is harmed during my absence, you'll pay with your life. Have no fear, majesty, I will look after her to the very best of my ability. As soon as the king was gone, the stepmother queen went to all lengths to get into his room. She put opium into the wine of his servant and stole the key from him when he fell asleep. She unlocked the door and turned the room upside down in search of clues to her stepson's strange behavior. But the more she searched, the less she found. The only thing out of the ordinary in the room was that splendid apple in a golden fruit bowl. It must be this apple that is always on his mind. Queens, as you well know, always have a small dagger concealed in their sashes. She took out her dagger and began pricking the apple all over. Out of every wound flowed a rivulet of blood. The stepmother queen grew frightened, ran away, and replaced the key in the sleeping servant's pocket. When the servant awakened, he had no idea what had happened to him. He ran into the king's room and found blood all over the place. Oh my goodness, what will I do now? He exclaimed and fled. He went on to an aunt of his who was a fairy and possessed all the magic powders. The aunt took a powder suitable for apples under spells and another for bewitched maidens and blended them. 
The servant returned to the apple and sprinkled all the wounds with the mixture. The apple burst open and out stepped the maiden in bandages and plaster casts. The king came home and for the first time, the maiden spoke. Would you believe that your stepmother stabbed me all over with her dagger? But your servant has nursed me back to health. I am 18 and was under a spell. If you like, I will be your bride. If I like, indeed I do. The wedding was celebrated to the great joy of both palaces. The only person missing was the stepmother who fled and was never heard of again. Merrily through life they went, but were only content to give me one cent. I never spent. Reading by Cherise Manganiello.